Now let's talk about images. This is a small document with an image in it. This is what I call an inline image because here's the paragraph, there's the image, and there's the rest of the paragraph. The image is in line with the paragraph. Remember, HTML treats all those spaces and new lines just as if they were one space each. So this image is actually in line with the paragraph. Let's look at it in the browser. There it is. It's a little pointing finger image. It's just an icon from a set of free icons that I use. This paragraph has an image in line with it. Now, let's look at the code real closely. We have the image tag. SRC is the source of the image. It's the, for the URL. It's like href in the anchor tag, but in this case, because it's not a hyperlink, it's a source, not a hyperlink reference. And hand.gif, notice that it's a relative URL, which means it's in the same directory as the document itself. We have the width of the image in pixels and the height of the image in pixels. All these little icons I have are 20 by 22. It's easy to remember. And so there we have the image tag. Image is not a container, so it doesn't require an end tag and it doesn't have content. And so this whole paragraph is content within the paragraph tag, within the paragraph element, and it has the image in line with it, as we can see in the browser. Now, there is an error in this code, and I did this on purpose for you. This document, if I hand it off to the validator at validator.w3.org, will say your HTML has an error in it. The error is, is that it's missing a required attribute called alt, A-L-T, equals, and you put some text in between the quote marks, a finger pointing up. When we save this document, now we have legal HTML. If we look at it in the browser, it makes absolutely no difference. We move our cursor over it, it doesn't show up, but it makes it correct. And what this does, the alt text, it's actually important in some ways. And in many cases, I'll even use it. It is important in many cases, and it's useful in many cases. If you have an important image that is relevant to the content of your document, which I guess you could say in this case it is, the, the alternate text, the alt text, gives an opportunity for people with non-visual browsers, um, like speech browsers or a text browser such as Lynx that runs in a text-oriented or environment that doesn't have graphics. It gives those people an opportunity to know what the image is all about. Now, the unfortunate reason that I oftentimes leave it out is that older browsers, such as the Netscape 4 series and earlier, would when you moved your cursor over it, or if you left your cursor over an image, it would display that alt text in a little pop-up um, tooltip, like what we saw when we looked at the title attribute. And in fact, if I put the title attribute here instead of the alt, you can see what it looks like. Many browsers would do this. And I found that there are some images that just weren't important to the content, they were important to the layout. Blank spaces or decorative things on the page that are important not to the content but to the layout and so they're only important if you're seeing them and any sort of text popping up would be a distraction and, and would detract from the purpose of the image which in that case had to do with the layout. And so I just don't use the alt tag in those cases. You can if you like use an empty alt tag with just the quote marks and no content, and that's perfectly legal, and it passes the validator, and it serves no purpose, and it wastes bandwidth, and, you know, if it's important to you to have something that's just correct, that passes the validator, you can put the my code is validated logo on your page, then go ahead and include the alt tag. If the image is relevant to the content of the page, use the alt tag, and put something useful in there for people who won't be able to see the image for whatever reason. 
if your image is just there for decoration, um, which is, you know, perfectly valid purpose for an image in a, in a visual layout, then either use the empty content or don't include the alt tag. You have my permission. You can tell them I said it was okay. It won't validate, but it'll work fine. And in older browsers, which are, there are many around still today, it won't display the annoying tooltip. One note here, many of the automatic code generators will put an alt tag in automatically in all of your images because it is technically correct. And they won't leave it empty, they'll put in a space. And on these older browsers, when you move the cursor around on the page, or just leave it hanging there over some decorative image that has no actual text but just that space, a little yellow square will show up or a little empty balloon will show up. Is just in the way and useless and detracts from the overall layout of the page. So you may need to occasionally go in and edit the output from these automatic code generators just to take out that space and leave it as an empty content alt tag like the one I have here which is the two quotes and and nothing in between. So that's the general syntax of the image tag. In our next lesson, we'll learn how to make an image float to one side or the other.